The file you are about to hear has been thoroughly scrutinized by the Ethics Committee and approved by the O5 Council for release to trusted associates of the Foundation. This is SCP Unredacted. Item number, SCP-6087, Object Class, Keter. Special Containment Procedures. Currently, all known instances of SCP-6087-A are contained in individual cells located in Site-24's C-Wing and are to receive weekly counseling sessions with Drs. Isadora Hill and Colin Eastland. All suspected cases are to be investigated by Mobile Task Force Pi-1, City Slickers, with confirmed instances transported to Site-24 and Class B amnestics administered to all witnesses. Research into the origin of the anomaly is ongoing. Description SCP-6087 is a localized phenomenon occurring in Great Britain, affecting children between the ages of 5 and 14 years old. Those affected, designated SCP-6087-A, will spontaneously become incapable of exercising any form of vocal communication. Medical analysis has revealed no physical explanations for this condition, and in most cases, the effect appears to be permanent. All Foundation attempts at reversing the anomaly's influence, including intensive speech therapy and laryngeal transplant, have thus far been unsuccessful. Studies suggest that children prone to behaviors such as frequent lying and use of abusive and or explicit language are primarily susceptible to the anomaly's effects. In all documented occurrences, Dash A's anomalous properties manifested while the victim was sleeping, typically between the hours of 0100 and 0400 GMT. Over the following days, most instances will report severe throat pain as well as an unpleasant taste usually described as similar to that of expired meat, which may persist for up to a week afterwards. Additionally, several Dash A instances have noted the presence of numerous housefly, musca domestica, and insect larvae on their bedspread immediately after their alteration. The significance of this remains unknown. All Dash A instances are subject to periodic auditory hallucinations, which typically occur while the subject is alone and manifest in the form of faint cries and moans. In most cases, these hallucinations have been found to increase in frequency and intensity over time. There are currently five known Dash A cases spontaneously regaining their ability to speak while in Foundation custody, which coincided with the cessation of all auditory hallucinations. However, in all such occurrences, each subject was found to vocalize using a pitch tone, and regional accent they did not recognize as their own. Further research into this phenomenon is ongoing. Precisely when the anomaly first manifested is unknown. Although archived documents inherited from Her Majesty's Foundation for the Secure Containment of the Paranormal suggest the containment procedures were first implemented at some point in the early 19th century. Addendum SCP-6087's discovery was roughly concurrent with the publication of the earliest known literary reference to the Voice Taker, a mythical character originating in English folklore. The following is an extract from the revised edition of Of Myths and Monsters, 1910, by British historian and folklorist Horace Greenblatt, which contains one of the most detailed accounts of the Voice Taker currently in Foundation possession, provided by the Department of Mythology and Folkloristics. Depictions of the phantom known as the Voice Taker, scourge to all wicked and unruly children, have remained remarkably consistent across the centuries. The unsightly revenant is described as a tall, festering figure, wearing a thick beard made not of hair, but comprised of countless, ever-swarming flies and maggots. In life, the voice taker, who is given no Christian name, is said to have been born with a mouth much too big for his face, a deformity which most tellings attribute to his gossiping mother. As a result of this disfigurement, his cries throughout infancy were so loud and frequent 
that they caused the walls to shake and regularly kept his parents awake well into the small hours. The boy's father, fatigued and desperate, sought the counsel of a learned cleric, well versed in the ancient craft of alchemy. The priest provided him with a rare tonic of golden hue, previously utilized by a certain sect of silent monks from the Far East. This potion, the priest asserted, would silence the boy's screams for a year and a day, allowing his parents some much-needed rest. While the old priest specified that merely three drops were necessary for the desired result, the boy's father, skeptical of the elixir's potency, insisted on forcing the entire concoction down his son's oversized mouth. This had the unfortunate effect of leaving the boy permanently mute and earning him much mockery from his peers. Years passed, and the boy was soon put to work on his family farm until late in the winter of his 19th year, his life was cut tragically short. While wandering the forest in search of firewood, he tripped and fell down an old stone well, which had long ago fallen to disuse. Although the townsfolk searched for many weeks, because the boy was incapable of shouting for help, he was never rescued, swiftly succumbing to the elements. As he could not be afforded a Christian burial, the voice taker's spirit remains earthbound, cursed to spend the ages wandering the mortal plane. The voice taker's experience has given him a strong appreciation for the value of speech and an even stronger disdain for children who take theirs for granted by shouting, lying, and disrespecting their elders. Disobedient youth are warned that if they refuse to correct this behavior, the voice taker will visit them in the night when they will awaken to the pungent stench of earth and decay and upon catching gory glimpse of the maggot-bearded monster looming before them, the victim will inevitably open their mouth to scream. Yet, before the sound can escape, the silent specter strikes, extending one bony arm down the unruly child's throat and stealing their voice away, before stuffing it into his burlap sack. Once his bag has reached its fill, the voice taker deposits his stolen treasure, where their owners can never retrieve them at the bottom of the same well where he lost his life. It is said that during clear nights, his victims' voices, which in their disembodied state are incapable of producing all but the most primal screams and moans, can be heard as faint echoes on the wind. Some variations maintain that in rare cases, should one of his victims display exemplary behavior, the voice taker may decide to return a voice to its owner. However, as this creature is noted to have a tendency towards careless, this often results in situations where boys are mistakenly given girls' voices and vice versa. Further study has confirmed that over 80% of Dash A instances have exhibited varying degrees of familiarity with this legend. This suggests that the anomaly's effects are at least partially infohazardous in nature. Efforts to eradicate the voice taker from the European cultural zeitgeist have thus far proven successful. Thank you for listening. If you like what you hear, join my Discord community, hire me on Fiverr, or help support me by becoming a patron for as little as $3 a month. Regardless of tier, all patrons get early access to every single episode. The links are in the description. I don't have the talent it takes to write a skip. All I do is read. Original authors make this podcast possible. So, credit to the original author. Their link's in the description. Show them some love as well. Consider becoming a member of the SCP Wiki. Upvote their work and maybe write a skip of your own. Maybe I'll read it here someday. You never know if you never try. The content of this podcast and content relating to the SCP Foundation including the SCP Foundation logo, is licensed under Creative Commons ShareLight 3.0, and all concepts originate from scpwiki.com and its authors. This recording, being derived from this content, is hereby also released under Creative Commons ShareLight 3.0.